Social Security 2100 in 2022. Will they get it passed before the end of the year? That's a great question and exactly what we're going to focus on right here in the video, so let's get right into it. All right, a quick update and review on the Social Security 2100 as requested by some of you down in the comments section. Will Congress get this bill done before the end of 2022? That's the main question we're going to be focusing on and the answer that all of us want to know right now. I can tell you this much, there are lawmakers out there right now who are pushing to get this bill done within the next couple months here. So let's get into it and discuss what's currently going on right now and where does Congress currently sit with this all-important bill. Let's get into it. However, really quickly before we do, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe by hitting the button right down below the video. As I am your one and only daily advocate, I'm here for you each and every day watching all of these moving parts very closely and especially all of these very important announcements coming out of the administration, the president, lawmakers, Congress, and anything that Congress is currently working on right now, including all of these bills that are floating around Congress, new bills, pieces of legislation, reform to these very important benefits, as well as anything in regards to money, raises to benefits, programs, checks, stimulus, or anything else right now. There's a lot going on. Things are being announced literally every single day, which is why I'm watching all of it very closely and breaking it down into these videos so you can stay tuned with what's going on and how you can grab as much as you possibly can. And of course, know what is going to be impacting you, your money, your benefits, your lifestyle, your bank account, all of these things. There's a lot going on. So anyway, thanks so much for joining me. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. And I'll continue to be here for you every single day as that's my dedication and my commitment to you and the community. All right, now let's jump into it and talk about the Social Security 2100. Where do we currently stand with this thing? And what is this bill all about anyway? All right, here's what it comes down to. Let me quickly run through a few of the details about this. Now, this is kind of an expansive bill. In fact, there's been a couple different iterations of this bill. In fact, this is the second iteration of it. The other one was introduced a few years ago in 2019. From then until now, it's been changed a little bit. And this one has been circling around Congress for quite a while, but again, According to what I've been reading on this and according to what lawmakers are currently saying about this, they want to get this bill done before the midterm elections. So even before the end of the year, roughly two months before the end of the year, they even want to get this bill done. Guess what? The midterm elections are only a couple months away, right? It's going to be coming quick. We know that much. Well, here's the thing. Uh, lawmakers know just as well as we do that uh, lawmakers are trying to get something done right now, right? Because the fact of the matter is, what have they really done for us in the last couple years here? I think we can all say it together. Let's say it together now. Nothing, right? We can all agree they've done a whole lot of nothing. So anyway, the fact of the matter is lawmakers understand just as much as we do that low income and fixed income beneficiaries are having the hardest time right now with all of this inflation that they've caused for us. So thank you very much, Congress. Uh, but anyway, the fact of the matter is they completely recognize they need to get something done here before the midterm elections because ultimately they wanna get some attention, right? And again, you can clearly see here, I am not taking political sides, but rather it's basically all uh, people in Congress. But the fact of the matter is they do want to get this bill done before the midterm elections. So let's quickly talk through some of the details here that are included within the Social Security 2100. Now, again, this is not gonna be an all encompassing uh, video talk Talking about the Social Security 2100, I would need to make a dedicated video talking about that because honestly, there's a lot into it. And it's so this video is not going to be completely comprehensive as far as everything in this bill, but let's quickly run through some of the main provisions in there uh, that they want to do. I also want to point out a couple of the downfalls behind this bill as well, because even though it sounds good, it's actually not perfect, okay? So here's one of the major problems with this bill, and I want to point this out right from the very start. The Social Security 2100 actually implements these uh, provisions into Social Security and these changes for only five years. That's it. They sunset after five years. So. It's not like a huge long-term fix like the Social Security Expansion Act that was introduced by Bernie Sanders and a few other Democratic senators uh, just about two months or so ago, a month and a half or so ago, uh, that was actually introduced. And that one was the one that would actually raise benefits by $200 per month. That one actually has provisions in there to extend out solvency as well as a variety of other changes to Social Security all the way out until 2096. So for another, what, 74 years? So that's a long-term solution, right? The Social Security 2100 does not offer that. It just offers basically a five-year solution. So basically what it does is it pushes the, the kind of the deadline out by another five years so that Congress can kind of get things together and get this uh, program actually fixed up. So that's what Social Security 2100 does. So that's one of the major downfalls behind this. However, 
Let's quickly talk now about some of the major provisions within the Social Security 2100. And again, there's about a dozen different provisions within this thing to change benefits, to raise benefits, to adjust the way that benefits are calculated. There's all kinds of different things within here. But a couple of the major ones are, number one is to adjust the way that the annual cost of living adjustment is actually calculated. Right now, it is calculated by using the CPIW, which is the Consumer Price Index for Urban Wage Earners and Clerical Workers. That's what they're using right now. However, they want to change it just like virtually every other per, uh, piece of uh, legislation out in Congress right now. They pretty much all want to do this, but they want to change it from the CPIW to the CPIE, which is the Consumer Price Index for the Elderly, which better uh, reflects the actual expenses that elderly and people that are living on a fixed income actually experience on an ongoing monthly basis and an annualized basis rather than the CPIW that doesn't actually reflect the actual living expenses for those people who are living on a fixed income. Uh, seniors, older adults, people with disabilities, people like this. So they want to reflect that as well. And as we can see from looking at all the numbers behind the CPIW versus the CPIE, over long periods of time, the CPIE has outperformed the CPIW by a little bit. And that's the thing is, if we continue to add these little uh, adjustments to the annual cost of living adjustment a little bit every single year over long periods of time, it actually adjusts for hundreds of dollars in your monthly benefit. So again, it would have been nice if they implemented this about, I don't know, 20 years ago. It would be uh, reflected in our benefits a lot more, uh, more pronounced right now, as in our benefits would be hundreds of dollars higher right now if they actually would have implemented this back about 20 years ago. However, since they didn't, I guess late is better than never. So again, uh, the, basically what we have is the power of time and compounding with that little adjustment each and every year, a little bit higher, and ultimately over long periods of time, it actually compounds on top of each other over and over and over, and ultimately re uh, results in a pretty big substantial raise to benefit. So that's one of the major provisions that they wanna do in there as well. They also want to adjust the minimum guaranteed benefit for those low income workers and low income earners up to 125% of the federal poverty line. Again, this is a pretty big one as well. This would impact millions of social security beneficiaries. And with this one, what they want to do, like I said, is adjust that benefit up to 125% of the minimum, uh, sorry, 125% of the federal poverty line, which by the way, as of right now, the federal poverty line is sitting at $13,590 per year, or uh, what does that calculate out to? $1,132 every single month and 125% of that would actually be $1,415 every single month. So that's what it comes up to. And uh, by the way, that is just under $17,000 for the year. Uh, so yeah, you can see here, that'd be a pretty substantial uh, increase and adjustment to the benefit as well. So these are a couple of the major provisions. And again, I'm not gonna go through the whole list of them because there's over a dozen and realistically, I should make a dedicated video just about that. But the fact of the matter is, many of you have been wondering, are they really gonna get this done before the end of the year or even before the midterm elections? That's a good question. Here's a few things that we need to look at. Number one, the timeline. How much time do we have between now and the midterm elections? Realistically, not much. Only a couple months. It's not going to take, uh, it's not going to be that much longer until the midterm elections are right on top of us. Ideally, they want to get this bill done if they were to do it this year uh, before the midterm elections. Why? Because how would that look for fixed income beneficiaries if Congress came into the rescue, they, they ride in on their white horse and they solve the problem and then they gallop away into the sunset? Would that be pretty nice? Well, Probably would be, but sounds like a fairy tale to me, right? <laughs> Let's be real with ourselves for a second. The fact of the matter is, if they were to get this done, they would need to start working on it immediately to get this thing done because we know that Congress is historically very, very slow with virtually everything that they do. And it's likely gonna go through a pretty substantial process of uh, debate, negotiation back and forth, and if they can actually get this bill done. And again, there's gonna be multiple different amendments to it. This is just the original proposal that was introduced by John Larson, who is one of the Democratic representatives. Just because he has a great idea and wrote it all up, and this is the bill that he's presenting, doesn't mean that it's gonna be passed in this uh, in this actual, um, in this uh, like iteration, right? It's gonna be changed in a pretty substantial way. So we know this, just like any bill that Congress ever works on, as it works its way through the legislative process, they make a lot of changes to it. So we know that for sure, which by the way, this cannot be done through reconciliation. It must be done on a bipartisan basis. Well, that's, you know, a little bit more difficult to do too, because asking the parties to work together these days is pretty difficult, right? There's a huge uh, margin of separation between Congress. So 
that's just another hurdle that we're dealing with right now. But the fact of the matter is it could be done before then, which by the way, also want to throw this out there as well. This bill has over a hundred co-sponsors on it already. The fact of the matter is what that means is that a lot of people in Congress are already in support of this bill. They want to get this thing done and they think that yes, this would be a great addition and a great way to actually shore up social security. But again, it would only do it for about five years. And that's the major problem. Then they would have to be right back here, uh, kind of hashing this whole thing out once again, doing the same process on another piece of legislation to help uh, fix up the program yet again. Uh, but at least it would prolong it for at least another five years. But okay, so let's just say for, for example, they don't get it done this year or even before the midterm elections. What happens then? Well, then we get pushed out into, say, 2023. Well, there's maybe one uh, nice little thing about that. In the event that things are actually pushed out into 2023, now don't get me wrong. I know that we need to get these adjustments quickly, but the fact of the matter is, I can't do anything about it. I'm not the person in charge of Congress, and ultimately, you know, it's all up to them at the end of the day. But if they do wait until 2023 to get this thing done, I guess the one silver lining behind that would be the federal poverty line would be adjusted higher. Therefore, that minimum guaranteed benefit would also be adjusted higher because we'd be calculating from a base number that would be higher, and applying a multiplication of a percentage would also indicate that that number uh, for a minimum guaranteed monthly benefit would also also adjust a little bit higher as well. Kind of makes sense? Anyway, I can get into those details. I don't know, maybe in early 2023 to see, you know, do they did they pass up on this thing? Did they get it done? Where do we currently stand with this? So of course, I'll continue watching it very closely as I always do, but this is another bill that's out there right now. And realistically, this looks like one of the most promising bills out there that is in Congress as it relates to Social Security. So as I do get more details on this, of course, I'll keep you posted here, but we're running out of time between now and the midterm elections. If they actually wanna get this thing done, they gotta get on it and get something done here quickly because it's gonna take them some time in Congress to go through all of the procedures that they need to do and ultimately make all the amendments and the negotiations and all those other things, it's gonna take them some time. So if they wanna do it, in other words, they gotta do it soon. They gotta get working on this thing at least. So anyway, to answer your question, could it possibly pass before the end of the year? Yeah, by all means it could, but if they're going to do it, they have to start talking about it now. They can't really delay any, any further because it's going to take such a substantial amount of time. Anyway, as I do get more details on this or any other pieces of legislation or changes to social security, retirement, SSDI, survivors, SSI, VA, RRB, or any other benefits, money, checks, or anything like this, of course, I'll be right here for you, breaking it all down and letting you know what's going on. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, share the video with your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out some of the other thousands and thousands of videos right here on the channel. Until next time, have a good one. Thanks so much for joining me and hope this one helps you out. Enjoy your day and I'll catch you again later in the next video.